Usually in humanitarian action, data will have been collected using an electronic data collection tool such as Kobo or manually using paper. Either way, the data will need to be collated and inputted into one place for analysis. Electronically, this can be done by exporting the Excel file directly. Manually, this data will need to be inputted into a spreadsheet or information management system for analysis. Here we use Excel, a commonly used tool for simple data manipulation. Here you can see a raw set of data that includes the Washington Group short set of questions. Start by cleaning your data to make sure that there are no errors, blank or missing fields, duplication and that everything is coded in the same way. To do this, hide unnecessary columns and create a table. Then check each of the columns for discrepancies. In columns P to U, you have the six Washington Group questions that were asked to the respondent. For the questions, we will use numbers to run the analysis. One is no difficulty, two is some difficulty, three is a lot of difficulty, and four is cannot do it at all. Make any adjustment to the column headings to make sure they are clear. As you've already seen in this e-learning, the Washington Group describes disability as a continuum and not a binary. However, when calculating the prevalence of persons with disabilities, we must arrive at a set of data that identify persons with and persons without disabilities. To do this, we need to decide a threshold or a cutoff. The cutoff recommended by the Washington Group is anybody who has answered a lot of difficulty and cannot do it at all to any of the six questions at least once, as this identifies the majority of persons with moderate disabilities with the least false positives or errors. Other cutoffs can be used depending on the purpose of the data collection. To calculate the number of persons with disabilities using this cutoff, create a new column and add in the relevant formula to pick up any value that is greater than two. This means that people who have answered a lot of difficulty, number three, and cannot do it at all, number four, are identified as persons with disabilities. In this data set, persons with disabilities are identified with one. Check through the data set to make sure the formula has been picked up correctly throughout. Calculating a disability prevalence can be done in different ways. One way to do it is to select all the data in the column and record the total number of people. Then, filter by one for disability and record the sum. Doing a simple percentage will give you the prevalence. The summary table used in this video is available for you to download and use when analysing your data. Another way to calculate disability prevalence is by using a pivot table. Once you've created a pivot table, you can select your cutoff This will give the same total as you have seen in option 1. It is sometimes interesting to calculate by domain as there may be differences to note that can be useful for programming. To do this you can filter the question by domain and select 3 and 4 that equal disability using the Washington Group recommended cutoff. Here you can check the sum total and record it. Don't forget to release the filter before moving to the next domain. You can then update the summary table with the totals. Another way to do this is to create a pivot table. 
Using the pivot table and selecting the domain you want to calculate, you can create a table. By adding together the numbers that have been calculated for 3 and 4, the same count should be arrived at as before. Once you have the pivot tables or calculations done for each domain, you can complete the summary table. However, don't forget the total number of people who have responded per domain does not equal the total number of people with disabilities as per the Washington Group recommended cutoff. Let's go back to the data to see why. Here you can see that for this person, for example, they have recorded a lot of difficulty functioning, marked with a 3, and cannot do it at all, marked with a 4, in all six domains. You can see here why it is important not to calculate this person six times by counting domains. Instead, to calculate persons with disabilities, this person must be counted only once. The short set of questions is one of the simpler sets of data, being only six questions. The other question sets follow the same logic, but require the manipulation of additional questions and at times different response categories. For the child functioning module, you can download the different tabulations and scripts to support the data analysis on the UNICEF website. This video was designed to show you the main steps involved in the analysis of the Washington Group short set of questions using Excel. This analysis is not always a simple process, and so you may find you need more support to make this analysis to your own data. For other Washington Group sets of questions, the Washington Group have scripts to support the analysis on software such as SPSS. All of these resources, and others, can be found in the resource section of this e-learning.